Somebody once said to me that the solutions to some of our big global challenges lie not so much in technology, but in changing people's minds. But as a scientist, I found it really, really hard to change people's minds. No matter how many papers you write and how much thinking you do, things aren't changing. And so for me, it became the idea of maybe I have to lead and by example to make a change. And maybe it's just down to some good food and conversation. So I've brought you some good food today, a seaweed corn chip, in the hope that I might be able to change your mind, or at least start engaging you in the conversation. So why seaweed? Because seaweed, to me, connects me directly to the molecular pathways in our global systems. But not half as much as it does for this guy. The marine iguana of the Galapagos Islands, he loves seaweed. So much, indeed, that his life and his size depend on it. He's connected to the global cycles because the patterns of El Niño and La Niña drive different productivity rates of seaweed in the Galapagos. And some years there's lots of seaweed, and other years there's not so much. And in the years when it's abundant, he looks as handsome as this. And in the years where it's not so abundant, he still looks this handsome, he's just a whole lot smaller. He's one of the few, in few vertebrates that can actually shrink. And when I say that, he's not just losing weight, he's actually shrinking his body mass, his bone mass, and he can shrink by about 20% in response to the food resources available to him. Imagine if we as humans could do that in a year of drought like this year, to be able to adapt to the food and water that's available to us. But unfortunately, we haven't evolved to be able to do that. And so it's up to us to create the food production systems that support us sustainably and feed each and every one of us into the long term but that are also balanced and su supply us with the nutrition that we need for our health and happiness as human beings. This is why seaweed excites me. Because with the formula of sun hitting the seaweed on a day like today, the photons create energy that forces together simple molecules like carbon dioxide and water and create the battery of life that is glucose and starch, fueling every living thing around us that we see today. These starch molecules are a storage of energy that can be used to create new molecules in the seaweed. And these molecules might be something like omega-3. That could go through the corn chip and end up in the grey matter of your brain cells, helping you to make smart decisions in the next few days or it could create lutein, an antioxidant pigment that will reside at the back of your retina and protect your eyes from the oxidative blue light of the sun. But the most exciting molecules for me are ones that have really only been looked at in science for the last decade. It's the dark matter of biology, as a recent science paper called it. It's the glue of life. It's what glues our cells together, and seaweed's particularly rich in it. We might otherwise know it as the slime on the seaweeds. But we have this type of connective tissue in our own cells, in our own bodies. And this connective tissue is, is like a sponge underneath and around the cells and the, and the blood systems that we're more familiar with. This connective tissue has been identified as something we may need to be eating more of. And some of you might know other connective tissue that we eat, that's called glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate, or even bone broth. Well, I'm fascinated by this molecule, and I extract it, and I've put it in the corn chip for you to eat today. But what happens when we've eaten the corn chip and this slime that's now dried in the seaweed? Well, it ends up in our gut, and we've known about the human gut for an awful long time. The structure here, drawn in the 1800s, shows how detailed we were looking at the complexity of the gut. But what we haven't looked at um, since looking at the physical structure of the gut too much is the ecosystem that's functioning and working, and bi biology and chemistry and our metabolism that's turning over the molecules that we swallow. It's 30 square metres 
of our surface area exposed to the environment every day, and 70% of our immune system resides there. So we're only just still touching on the very beginnings of understanding what goes on in our gut and what happens to the seaweed molecule once we've swallowed it. We know that it can block enzymes, so maybe it's blocking the enzyme that would break down glucose and slow its progression so that you, down into your lower gut so that it can be fermented there and create the butyrate gas that we need to protect our colon from things like bowel cancer. Or we know now that this molecule in our particular green seaweeds is actually recognised by human skin cells and the epithelium of our gut may be binding to it and connecting it to the other immune cells floating around in our ecosystem. Or maybe there's a bacteria that latches onto this molecule and starts to break it down into unique components like endocannabinoids. And these are the signal molecules that will unlock, open and close the, the junctions between our gut cells and let things pass through into our bloodstream or not. So you can appreciate there's so much going on in our gut and with the things that we're putting in there and the function of molecules like the seaweed slime that I'm feeding you today. But after that, the molecules have done their job and they're broken down to their smallest components again, and we're excreting them either through our breath or I've taken you on a molecular journey from the sun to the toilet. But it doesn't end there, it continues back to the ocean again, where the carbon dioxide and the water can once again, with seaweed and the sun, be formed into new molecules of life. Now this seems small, but these systems are really big. How big are these systems? If you think about the highways that we drive on, they're a fossil, fossil of the photosynthesis that happened many years ago, all of the highways around the world. If you look at the White Cliffs of Dover, they're an impressive collection of only one species of algae that accumulated and died in that spot. And all of the life around us today, you, me, the plants and the animals, are products of photosynthesis. So my molecular perspective and seaweed have inspired me to hike a ride on the back of the molecular journey through seaweed and create seaweed farms, where we capture the rogue molecules of nit nitrogen, carbon dioxide and water and create new molecules through the production in marine ecological systems and create products that then enter your own internal ecological system. And that's my contribution to a future solution of more balanced food production on the planet and a more nutritional balance for healthy and happy people. Thank you. <laughs>